Hi everyone and welcome back to a new tutorial on the how to make a similar game series. So in the past couple of tutorials I've showed you guys how to make some systems such as getting strength, selling and opening up shops and data saving and uh, these two little uh, text labels. So in this tutorial we're going to be trying to work some more on the shop. But before we start, I want to let you guys know that I have a Patreon. So if you guys want to support me or want to have access to every single one of my tutorial files, everything will be available on my Patreon for the $10 tier. With that being said, let's start. So what we're going to be doing is going to replicated storage, shared items, sort two, and in the image ID, we're going to fill that. So what I'm going to do is look in the images library and try to find a sword so i'm just going to look for swords you can upload your own image and copy the id but i don't have my own image so i'm just going to copy the image of a red sword now i'm going to paste the id right here in my img id uh, string value and I'm going to set the price. Let's give it a price of five. The cooldown to, let's keep it at one and the amount to three. Now, what I'm going to do is enter in my main client script. And inside of this, what I'm going to do is do image temp dot. Let's go back to our template. So temp.img dot image id or I think it was dot image uh, is equal to let's check so image okay what we're gonna do here is go to go back to our image and instead of copying the asset id we will copy the asset URL. So just press copy asset URL and set the image ID to the asset URL. After doing that, temp.img.image is equal to and image ID dot value. Now play the game and you should see that whenever you open the shop, it should have of the tools and the image id is set correctly now we need to select items from this shop so we're gonna do just that by just doing creating a function or let's do it right here instead so temp dot mouse button one click on connect function and what i'm going to do is set some uh properties of the info frame so what i'm going to do is create an info frame so make the shop visible and add a frame position it wherever you want and let's make it a bit bigger and go to plugins unique conversion scale and I'm just going to put it wherever I want. Now, I'm going to set the background color to a light gray so that we can see it. And I'm going to rename it to info with a capital I, info. And I'm going to add a UI corner to it and set the corner radius to 0 0.05, 0. And hopefully that will look good. And yes, it does. What I'm going to do now is add a text button and position it wherever I want again. And I'm going to add a UI corner to it and I'm going to convert it to scale. After doing that, I'm going to rename it to buy and I'm going to set the text scale property true and the text to buy and the text color three to white and the font to for Doka one and the background color to a light green or maybe a darker green after doing that i'm going to set the corner radius to a bigger number so 0.1 comma zero 
uh, or 0 0.2 comma 0. That looks a bit better. And I'm going to add a image label, position it wherever I want again, and convert it to scale. And I'm going to rename it to IMG. And I'm going to have a UI corner. And the corner radius is 2.1 comma 0. And the image I'm going to keep as nil. So don't touch that. And after doing that, I'm going to add a couple of text labels or only one actually. So I'm just going to add a text label right here. Make it a bit bigger and convert it to scale again. And set the background transparency to one. After doing that, so the text scale property to true and the text to nil. And the font to whatever font you choose, I'm going to go with for Doka one. And what I'm going to do now is go back to my main client script and have some variables. So what I'm going to do is select, uh, go to line four and I'm going to add a local, uh, scrolling frame or local. Let's go back to our scrolling frame first. Uh, I mean, our info. So local info is equal to shop can wait for child info. After doing that, I'm going to do a local buy is equal to info can wait for child buy and local description now we rename, rename this text table to description uh i spelled it wrong so i'm going to spell it right local description is equal to info can wait for child description after doing that what i'm going to do is set its name to a description without a space and local i think that's it local actually i'm going to do local image info is equal to and info can wait for child img what i'm going to do now is go back to my mouse button one click event what i'm going to do here is img info dot uh, image is equal to and image id dot image dot uh, value and what i'm going to do is have a variable right here an empty variable so local local selected temp and i'm going to have that as nil and select the temp selected temp is equal to and uh, temp after doing that um i'm going to do a image or let's do description dot text is equal to and stats and i'm going to have it to have a two dots so you can to uh, complete that what i'm going to do is set the stats to i think item dot I think it's uh, amount, yes, dot dot, and price, dot dot, and price, uh, price value, and that's it. Now I'm going to play the game and see if that works. So I can select this and nothing happens. This is normal. What I'm going to do here is, oh, this is very simple. All you have to do is go back to your main client script and uh, item.amount.value. And that should be working, hopefully. And let's select a template. And as you can see, it works. 
Now, what I'm going to do is have a buy button dot mouse button one click event. So buy button dot mouse button one click event can connect a uh, function. If selected temp is not equal to nil, then and I think we're gonna do the rest in the next tutorial. If this helped, make sure to, to subscribe, like the video, share it with your friends, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.